Every AI has its limits, and in today's video, we're gonna look at what Google Gemini 2.5 Pro can actually do using Google's Canvas feature. How far can we push Canvas before it starts to fail or have problems? How many times can we prompt it in a single chat before it says, hey, you're hitting your limits? And that is today's test, and we're gonna do this by recreating one of my favorite mobile games, Clash Royale. It is one of the top 10 grossing games on the Play Store, on the Apple Store, and we are going to try to recreate it using just pure vibe coding. So we're gonna go from something that looks like this to something that looks a lot better like this. I'm gonna take you through how I built this game and some of the highs and lows in building it. I'm not gonna go through every single prompt or every single build, but I just wanna kinda of give you an overview of the progress I made throughout. So truthfully, I just started with generate a game similar to Clash Royale. I want it to be a battle system where there are three towers on each side. There are different types of cards and you can deploy them. I want it to be using threes and 3D. So our first version, we had this error and I said fix errors and you can kind of see what it was able to give us right off the start. So we have archers and goblins and giants and an elixir bar, and they are kind of going across the bridge. They're battling. It's a pretty decent version for a single prompt. It's not bad at all. I, I mean, single prompt plus fixing error. So kind of like two prompts. I just want to have a quick reminder for you to click the subscribe button. It's completely free to do, and I cover the latest and greatest AI content on a daily basis. Let's continue building Clash Royale. Some of the fun stuff I had was this overview in my side. So I wanted to have some different visual options so you can like quickly flip to my side or overview. You can see the overview is a little bit glitchy and I spent a long time trying to fix this. So I ended up adding like tower view, bird's eye view, classic, and there are too many prompts trying to get this to work. You can see, I'm like, hey, I want the classic view to be the default. And you can see, I'm just kind of going next through the different builds. It really struggled to do this until I got this here. And even this wasn't good enough. I ended up fixing this later on by telling it to add in a little button that will allow me to adjust where I want it to look and then give me click the button and that will give us a console log, which I can then feed back into it to say, hey, this is the different views I want for each version. So classic will look however I want it to look. That was the way I fixed this problem here. But anyway, that is just the views. And I really went back and forth with views and visuals quite a bit, but that is not the worst of it. I'll get to that when I get to the stands, but you can see it's kind of like coming along. It's not bad. I wanted the walls to look kind of cool too. So I added this little brick view along the top and that also took a number of prompts. And I can tell you, it's kind of frustrating as a coder because I can like adjust this myself relatively quickly, but it is a lot of going back and forth, just completely vibe coding with it. And I'm gonna just show you, let me scroll down on the left here. You can see how long this is. And that is like, it's scaled down because it collapses a lot of the different responses. It was a lot of back and forth, but the walls were finally fixed. You can see here, it looks good now, but our stands and our rocks and trees are kind of like everywhere. So we're like, okay, get out of the map. But here is where the real fun began. And I wanna say I spent half my time on these stands. So you can see the stands here, they're facing the wrong way. And I'm just kind of gonna fly through this, but you can see I have people and stands facing the wrong way, facing the wrong way in the map, facing the wrong way outside of the map, facing the wrong way outside the map. And eventually they actually do start floating, which is even more frustrating. I changed the look of them so they at least match that they're no longer wooden. I thought that was kind of cool, but here you go. The left one is facing the right way, the right one isn't, and they're floating. Uh, I told it to just kind of like stop what it's doing and delete them and start over, start fresh, which may or may not have been a mistake, which I will explain later on in this video. But you can see we're getting pretty close here to what we want. They look good, just they are floating and still inside the map. So we're like, okay, bring them further back outside the map and now make sure they're not floating, which was a huge struggle. So here we go, they are functional. Our stands are here now, they look good. There are trees inside of them, which we will correct, but it's just a matter of adjusting the aesthetics. So I made this a drop down now, 
and my side, we have the enemy side, we have the classic view. It's starting to look pretty good, and you can see that the classic view doesn't look bad. It's pretty decent. We have tower view. It's all looking pretty solid. The bridge looks kind of cool. It's not bad for a vibe-coded Clash Royale game. Point I told is to add this little crown to the King Tower so they look a little bit cooler. And then the following prompt after the King Tower, this happened. And this just shattered all my hopes and dreams for building my Clash Royale styled game using just canvas. As you can see, what happened is there are trees everywhere, rocks everywhere, and there is no more stands. I spent a ridiculously long time with those stands just for them to be removed. And the reason why is the context window remembered me saying, remove the stands, recode them from the ground up, and it's thinking I don't want them anymore. So a few prompts later, and we have our stands back. We made the UI more compact. So I'm gonna go back for a second so you can kind of see how it was. It was super long, now it's just this little bar here, but in the process, our elixir bar broke. So as you fix one thing, other things break, but here we go, elixir bar is fixed and working again. And then I added this little animation here to the towers so they actually look good when they get destroyed. So you can see they kind of collapse and then there's this rubble that shows up. So it is actually a pretty cool animation. Let me just flip to the enemy side before they destroy this tower so you can kind of see it from here. So I like that you can flip views like that. It's kind of cool, but watch this animation. It's beautiful. Boom. And then there's rubble game over. So kind of cool. We're making little effects, making it look a little bit better. And we are still adjusting the camera. So this is the log camera button I was talking about. I can adjust it to however I want. I can hold control and then drag and I can say, okay, this is the view I want. I can click log camera. I can go to the console and I can see the camera position here. So I can actually just copy and paste this camera position into the Ask Gemini section and say, hey, this position here, set it for classic. And I had to redo the camera positions because I adjusted the user interface at the bottom to make it a little bit smaller and cleaner. So once that was fixed, we didn't need the log camera button anymore and we can kind of keep going forward and keep refining our game. Then I realized that the trees would sometimes spawn behind and you couldn't see your towers. So I told it to adjust the trees and that removed the stands again. Stands became a real problem throughout this project. So I said, get rid of all the trees. Give me back my stands. Uh, anyway, and yeah, you know how defeating it is when you see them like this? It's just hard to see. Then we added a start menu. So we can select eight cards and we can kind of select them. And that is when I realized we only have eight cards. So we can kind of hit play game. It aired out. Eventually we fixed the problem. So it would work. And then we said, hey, we want to really add more than eight cards for it to work. And that was a little bit of a challenge. So it started adding more cards. And eventually I said, okay, I don't want to sit here and select them each time. That's just too much work. So we are going to add a random button and make the GUI look nicer. So here are more cards that were added. We have new types. We have like fireballs and cannons. It's no longer just tower targeting troops and ground troops. We also have buildings and spells. And eventually we got our randomized deck. We said, hey, make sure it has a title. So I called it 3D Tower Battle and we can kind of continue forward. It's starting to look a little bit better. Here's where I came into some problems. So I told it to actually try to render better graphics for each card so it looks nicer. And that just absolutely destroyed the game. And many, many prompts later, we get it back to a functional state where it is using the text preview. And you can see I'm just kind of flying through the text preview where it just taking the first three letters of each card. So. We have a decent selection of cards and we can hit randomize deck, we can hit play, and we have a decent game. So there's our motor, our musketeer, we have some skeletons, uh, you can throw arrows and it has little effects. It's not bad. And we can kind of keep going through different versions. So we're just kind of simplifying the cards. You can see the rocket, the arrows and fireball, different colors. I really want these to look better. And I prompted a lot trying to get it to work and it just kept failing. And Eventually, and here is where the real problem came in, Gemini started warning me that I am reaching the end of my limits 
of what it is able to do. So this is the final-ish version that we have, and I'm gonna show you something that's actually kind of wild. So I haven't used or prompted Gemini as of this morning, so it's been at least 12 hours since I've prompted Gemini. So I can pick different cards like Musketeer Knight, or we can just hit Randomize, we have Baby Dragon. So we can hit Play Game, and somewhere along the way, and I didn't notice, we can plop in our Spear Golems, and they all look kind of cool. Like, those are our Spear Golems, they look cool. They have the little daggers. We can pop in our skeletons, that's a skeleton army. We have our musketeer who shoots far. We have our baby dragon who flies across the bridge and he shoots fire. So it's cool, but if you notice, they get stuck on the bridge. Hey, the cards get stuck on the bridge. The pathing used to work, please adjust so they function properly and can walk over. So we're gonna hit submit and I can only go back and forth with Gemini only a few times on this project now before it's going to start prompting me again that I've hit my limits. So because this chat is too long and the code is too long and it's not even that long, I guess it's like 2000 lines, but it's because of the mass amount of back and forth that I've had with it. It will use the limits a lot quicker. So let's see how many prompts I can use today before it starts telling me, hey, you have maxed out. So we are at one and let's see if we can fix the pathing before the end of this video. So I can leave a link in the description below so you can actually play this game yourself using the built-in canvas sharing feature. Okay, second prompt, the cards will still not cross the bridge. It came back, we have this console log error. We're gonna hit fix errors. It's gonna say just a second. We are technically up to three prompts for the day on this project, so let's kind of keep it going. <laughs> it fixed the errors, but it didn't. We have more console log errors, so fix errors again. That is number four. There are more errors, so we're gonna just prompt it again to fix it. Okay, so while we are on prompt number five, it was going through, it got up to line 1,213, and it says, you've been signed out, please sign in again. So we can hit sign in, it just refreshes. We're gonna come back to our project here, and we're going to try this again, and we're gonna hit fix errors. And the reason why it is starting to sign me out is because we are starting to hit our limit, so it will purposely say, hey, you have to sign back in. And we are about to get a little screen here that says, you're reaching your limit you cannot use this for X number of hours. So fun times ahead. And we got up to 611 this time, signed out. We're gonna sign back in. After seven or eight prompts, I kind of lost track. I got this Gemini is currently on a break. Give it a moment and try again later. And then if you restart or refresh rather, you're going to get a message that looks like this. It says you've reached Gemini's advanced usage limit. You can resume at 413 PM and I cannot get the game to get actually fixed. So if you guys wanna see me continue this project, I'm gonna take the code and move over to VS Code and I can actually like vibe code differently. And if you guys wanna see that, leave a like on the video, comment down below, let me know what you wanna see. If you enjoy this content, just a reminder, do subscribe, like the video tells the algorithm you wanna see more AI content in your feed, I'll have a link in the description below where you can try the last working version through Canvas Share. So you can play around with it. Let me know what your thoughts are on that. Leave a comment there. And that's all I got for today's video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. AI tools, AI news, AI prompts you can use. It's all for free. Just come and see at FranklinAI.com where you're meant to be.